Hello, today we are going to be looking at what is known in forensic science as the area of convergence. So when you look at this blood spatter, do you think that this is passive droplets or active droplets? Are they projected with force or are they just dropping down like somebody had a bloody nose? And how exactly do you know? What does that mean? So when we look at the blood spatter in this image here, you can see that there are elliptical type blood droplets. Now, I also see some that are tiny and circular. Now, do you suppose that those tiny circular ones are original parent drops, or do you think they're satellites? In my opinion, they're satellites. So this image is depicting active or projected blood droplets. Now, we can determine where the victim was at the point of bloodletting or when the um, damage to the person occurred, by looking at the area of convergence. So how do we figure that out? Well, first we have to figure out which direction the blood was moving. Then we work our way backwards. It's called deductive reasoning, my friends. So what I'm doing is I am looking at this arrow right here that I drew in. Because on all of these blood droplets, they all have a tail pointing in this general direction. Do you, can you follow my cursor? Okay, and so some of them are a little haphazard, right? But a majority of them point in this general direction. So the idea is I would draw a single line through the center of the ellipse and then through the center of the ellipse. And again, I would continue to do that until I found all of the lines through the different pieces of blood droplets that are um, in this image. And at that point, I would be able to find a three-dimensional area where the individual was standing. Now that I'm pointing out this area, it's probably pretty obvious that that's where the blood came from, okay? Um, but in some cases, it might not be that obvious. For example, let's take a look at this. What does this exactly mean? There's lots of blood droplets there, but it's hard to really determine exactly what happened. We've got a large pooling of blood that's occurring on the two by fours that are laying kind of cross-sectional across the mm, larger boards, because I don't want to guesstimate their size. But then I can see a lot of different blood spatter going in several different directions. It appears there's a tire iron and a wrench. Both have blood on them. That means that they're pro they were probably used um, to perform the act. So I'm guessing that somebody was maybe laying down here and they got hit by a tire iron. Now, how do I know that? I'm looking down here at these blood droplets. I'm looking over here at these and the direction that some of those elliptical blood spatters are facing. Now, is it possible that they were hit in this direction or hit in this direction, and then maybe come across this way, and as they pulled the wrench or tire iron back, there was more blood being thrown off the edge of the tire iron? It's totally possible, okay? So when forensic investigators come across a scene, they have to take photographs of all of that blood. Now you can see in the top picture with the photographer that that individual is looking at blood drops but it, it appears that the blood didn't dry right away and that it was dripping down the wall. So again, we've got the act of gravity working against us here, but we have to understand that when we look at that, we have to understand that those drips aren't necessarily part of what it is that we're supposed to examine. So what we would do is, like what Dexter does over here in the bottom right, is he'll use those blood droplets to determine their angle of impact. We're not quite ready to do that. We're gonna take a look at how that works um, in the next class. But today we're gonna to be focused on that area of convergence. And the other way to do this, if you're in an actual crime scene, is by a technique called stringing. So what Dexter did there was he pulled string from each of the key blood droplets to identify the points of origin. So you can tell exactly where the point of impact was, where the blood came from. Now, another way um, that that can work is um, by using lasers. So sometimes they will set up a, 
a, a piece of technology um, that shines a laser in that general direction to uh, identify that area of convergence. So what we have to remember is that this is a three-dimensional space. Okay, so think about a triangle um, that is three-dimensional. When we look at it on a piece of paper, we only get two-dimensional. So we have to look at the group of stains and see if we can figure out where the person was exactly standing. But for today's assignment, we're not going to be able to figure out exactly how high up on the person they were damaged. So if we take a look at today's assignment, give me just a minute so that way you can see this properly. Um, in today's post, you will see instructions that provide you with a scenario. Please make sure that you read through that. In the yellow section, you want to make sure that you read through the background because the background is what describes how to draw those lines of convergence. In the procedure, I have bolded and highlighted the things that you need to do, okay? And then there is an example down at the bottom of the page of how it's drawn correctly. So you are going to be given a sheet in which you've got four different blood samples to take a look at draw the lines of convergence, and then respond to the questions. Please turn it into the basket when you're finished. Thank you.